Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So this device is called an M5 Stack, essentially an ESP32 development kit. Now this particular model is the latest Core 2 version. With its 2 inch color IPS touchscreen, inbuilt Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, speaker, microphone and a whole load of other sensors, this little device can be put to good use even in ham radio. Now in this video, we will look at an application for the M5 stack called IC Multimeter. Now this application has been put together by a French ham radio operator, Foxtrot 4 Hotel Whiskey November, and it's a free download from GitHub. Now before you start thinking this is going to be extremely complicated to get working, let me show you how easy it is to get this remote display application working with an ICOM 705 and connecting via Bluetooth. So first, we need to install the application onto the M5 stack. To do this, you'll need Visual Studio Code and Platform I.O. installed on your computer. Now, Visual Studio Code is supported on Windows, Mac and Linux, along with Platform I.O. Now, I won't cover how to install Visual Studio Code or Platform I.O. in this video, as it's simply just downloading and installing the application. I will leave a link in the description, however, to make it easy for you to find it. Now, once you have Visual Studio Code and Platform I.O. installed, simply open the application. At this point, you will need to open a web browser and head over to the IC Multimeter GitHub page. Now, if you scroll down slightly, you'll locate the URL to the Git project. Simply copy this and then head back to Visual Studio Code. Then click on Clone Git Repository and paste in the URL you just copied into the top bar and hit Enter. You will then be prompted with a local location to store this application. Once it's downloaded, you'll be prompted on the bottom right to open the project. Click open and then you'll be presented with all of the files. Now, Under the SRC folder, we'll need to check a couple of settings within the settings.h file. Firstly, we need to define the model. Here I have 705 chosen because I am using the 705 radio. Underneath this, we'll need to select the connection type. And again, as I'm using the IC705, I will leave this as BT for Bluetooth. Now one last setting to check, and that's the CIV address, which is actually defaulted to the radio's defaulted CIV address as it comes from factory. Now if you've changed this on the radio, then you'll need to enter it here and replace the 0xA4 with your CIV address. Now the other settings here for Wi-Fi and proxy config are only used if you're using the proxy application for when you're using a 7300 or a 9700 via USB. As those radios don't have Bluetooth, you would need to connect a USB cable between your PC and radio and then use a proxy application. However, in this video, I'll only be showing you the direct Bluetooth connection between the radio and the M5 stack. Now lastly, click on the platform io.ini file and just make sure this contains the device you're using as there are around three different versions of the M5 stack. I'm using the Core 2. Now with the M5 stack plugged into your computer's USB port, simply click the little tick at the bottom of the screen to start the application compiling. Once finished, click on the little right arrow button to start the firmware upload to the M5 stack. And once the firmware upload is finished, the M5 stack will reboot and it will now start to show check pairing. Well, this is where you go over to your ICOM 705 and enter the settings area. Enter into the Bluetooth area and then make sure Bluetooth is turned on. Select device search, search data device, and then wait for the M5 stack to be detected. It will be named IC Multimeter. Now once the scanning has stopped, simply tap on the IC multimeter and select yes to connect. Now the first time I tried this, it came up saying failed. I just tried again and this time it prompted to confirm a pass key. Don't worry, there will be no pass key shown on the M5 stack, so just tap on confirm. And that's it. It will now start showing all the information from the 705 onto the M5 stack screen. 
Now, if you're wondering about what to set the CIV Echo back to, whether it should be on or off, well, I tried both and it appeared to work with either settings. Now, don't expect a super fast response from the screen. There is a small amount of lag between changing a frequency, for example, and the display updating. What I find useful though on this is the ability to see the squelch, mic gain and AF gain settings at a quick glance without even having to look at the 705 within the menus. Now one last thing to mention is that if you had entered your local Wi-Fi details within the settings.h file and then the M5 stack connected to your home Wi-Fi, you could then type the IP address of the M5 stack into a web browser and see a live representation of what's being displayed on the M5 stack. Unfortunately though, this does not update real time and to see any changes, you would have to refresh the browser. A little tip on how to find the M5 stack's IP address will be to log into your router and locate the device titled ESP32 Arduino. Well, there we go, guys. A little tutorial on how to get a nice little remote screen working with your ICOM 705. Now, if you've used this application before, connected it using the proxy to a 7300 or a 9700, let me know below. Let me know how quick it updates. As I said, I don't have those radios here, so I can't do any testing on it but it would be interesting to know how well it performs for you. A massive thank you to Armel, Foxtrot 4, HWN for all this hard work on this application. There was another iteration of this before, which you may have seen with a white background and the analog meter, but this one is far superior and in my opinion, looks far more cool. Now, if you guys don't own an M5 stack or even the version I've got, the Core 2, I'll leave a link down in the description of where you can purchase them from. Anyway, Thanks for watching, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.